few people that still remember and went to that school. So on the topic of the school, um, last week we received this decision, not even the last week, that the city of Bridgeport wants to back out out of the lease of that school next door. So what that means for us is the city of Bridgeport brought in $10,000 each month in additional income to our parish income. Our offertory income is around exactly that each month. So you're looking at about 50% of our income disappearing pretty quickly because I believe it's either June 1st or July 1st that they're asking to terminate the lease. Their justification is fair. They have a building which they own and they want to move to it because the program has gotten smaller um, and all credit to that. We are working with the diocese to figure out other solutions. The diocese has asked us to announce this and say, hey, if anybody has any ideas, we're open to them because this is the time and it's the season to see if we want to make something new out of that building, if we want to come up with alternative solutions, that'd be great, and we're open to looking into them. Everything has to go through the diocese, and everything has to be in the legal manner of separate entities that would loan out that school. Um, so not great news, because our parish income is about, or our parish expenses come up to about $17,000 each month, so you're looking at a shortfall of about $7,000 without that additional income each month. Um, so it's definitely going to take some work on everybody's side, the parish side, in trying to figure out a budget that works for some temporary time while we figure out other solutions. And of course, up to us to help us come up with alternative solutions and if possible to those who can help us supplement that income which we might be missing in that temporary time. A tough ask as it is always, but here's where we are as a parish. Um, the bishop said to us, St. Michael's can handle anything. You guys are trooper parish. And it's true. We've handled a lot of things, and they're very generous to us in their ability to help us. But it's definitely going to take all hands on deck. So with that in mind, it's definitely something we, we're going to keep in prayer. We already have some ideas in the back of our heads There's a, that, that could possibly be the solutions, but they're all very very just in the idea phase of things. Um, so moving forward, prayer, definitely a lot of it for the parish, and that hopefully we'll come up with another solution. And of course, support if you can, if you're able to give a little bit more in this time period while we transition to be able to supplement for what we might be missing from the city of Bridgeport, that'd be tremendous. Otherwise, this mass intention is being celebrated for the repose of the soul of Freda Vitetsky and as requested by the family. And now let us offer up all of the intentions we have in our hearts at this Holy Mass. Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Introibat altare Dei, Deum quiltificat juventutem adiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Procedamus in pace.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. In the beginning of this Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare our hearts to celebrate these most sacred mysteries of our faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of God. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. God in the highest and 
Almighty ever living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let 
your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone rejected by human beings but chosen and precious in the sight of God and like living stones let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ for it says in scripture behold I am laying a stone in Zion a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame therefore its value is for you who have faith but for those without faith the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall they stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. 
The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, today in the Gospel, we hear about something what is so human, what is so deeply rooted in our everyday life. We hear about being troubled. What does it mean that my heart is troubled? It means my heart is full of questions, sorrows, maybe because of unknown future, maybe this is what we have in our parish because of all of these backgrounds and financial problems. Maybe because of many other questions which are human and which do belong to our life. It is not surprising that Jesus is talking about this in the Gospel. Because our experience nowadays in our life is not so far away from the experiences of the disciples to that time. Of course, maybe they didn't have, have problems with schools or buildings, but they did. They had many other struggles. So what's about Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. It is, it is a question in this, uh, in this first sentence, something what, what is to read between the lines. I let my heart be troubled. I let it. I allow myself to go into these troubles. And Jesus knows about this. Because Jesus is the true man and true God. So everything what is human is known to him, very well known. Look, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, even he himself, even he will be tempted by the evil one in the desert. So nothing what is human, nothing what can uh, cause troubles, Nothing is far away from Jesus. He knows it. And therefore, my dear friends, therefore he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Why? You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. This is exactly what the gospel is about. About faith. About hope about trust. The Gospel says, you and me, that all the troubles are because of something. That our only one task and uh, possibility, Christian possibility, is to bring these troubles to God. To entrust them to Jesus. But how can I entrust something when I don't trust, when I don't have trust in my heart? You know, therefore, maybe this is so touching, most especially in our churches here, uh, this prayer by the picture of the merciful Jesus. Jesus, I trust in you. It's nothing new what Sister Faustina wrote there or what Jesus told her to write, but it is so important. Jesus, I trust in you. It is something so important in our spiritual life. 
Because this one short prayer, I trust in you, shows us the right way of trust and entrust. I can't entrust anything if I don't trust Jesus. And this trust in Jesus, this is rooted, and Jesus told this many times, in, 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 Jesus said about this uh, in the Gospel, and this is also what Sister Faustina wrote, by the way. Uh, this trust is always rooted in my faith. If I don't believe, I can't trust. If I don't trust, I can't entrust. So my dear brothers and sisters, uh, I think this gospel is a very good one for this day and for our parish, family, community. We faced already so many challenges. And what did we learn from all these challenges? That we can face them only together. Alone it's not possible, but together Everything is possible together with each other and together with God. Because for God is nothing impossible. So with other words, everything is possible for those who believe. I would like to ask you for your prayer. For this, our beautiful, lovely parish community. Because it is our responsibility, this church everything what belongs to this St. Michael's Parish. I like when I hear our new parishioners, American parishioners, they always say, I love my Polish house. They don't speak Polish, but they chose this parish to be members here. And how they describe this place, I love my Polish house. Yes, we do too. Therefore, my friends, this is what we should do. First of all, pray. And then the other solutions, they are to find. I would like to finish my uh, sermon today with this beautiful word from Psalm, which we sang today. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people united in faith, 
let us join our hearts and offer these prayers to our Lord. For all deacons, as those ordained to serve, may God empower them in revealing the light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For public officials, may God give them clarity to lead with mercy and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those nearing death, may the Holy Spirit comfort them bringing the peace of Christ to their final hours on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may Jesus draw us together in unity as a holy people, glorifying God the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died in faith, May Jesus lead them to the place he has prepared as they rejoice with the saints forever. Let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Alfreda and in all intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you call us to be your own people. Please hear our prayers and answer them in your wisdom. We ask for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The upper collision is number 633. You are the way. 633. You are the way. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, o Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. The 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, St. Father Francis, St. Anthony, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bring them the power and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled.
Let us pray. Graciously we present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to new ways of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. And Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We have a protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, a Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Domino. Deo gracias. <laughs> 